Um, could you just update us on what the situation is with Cristiano Ronaldo at the moment? Obviously, he played half a game uh, against, or half an hour against Brighton. Um, is he available to start? And is there any more certainty around his future? So he had a good training week. I, I thought he played a little bit longer as half an hour. So I would say uh, he has now two half a games. And for the starting 11, we will see tomorrow. I, of course, I made my decision, but uh, I keep it. Um, can I also ask you about Marcus Rashford? There's a lot um, that's been said about him and the link with Paris Saint Germain today. Um, where is Marcus? Where does he fit in your plans? Obviously, he missed a, a good chance against Brighton. He's really important, and as you have seen from the first day I'm in, I'm really happy with him, and definitely I don't want to lose him. He's in our plans, so, and he will stay in Manchester United. What have you done this week on the back of the result um, on Sunday? Because that obviously wasn't the way that you would want to start a season or a new uh, time at Manchester United. What, what have you done to try and rectify that from this week? Oh, what I always do after every game, I analyse the game and uh, what went well, what went wrong, and then where can we improve, where have we to improve, uh, how do we have to train, and of course uh, we tell the, the players and we show them where we have to improve and how to do that, to give them the solutions. Eric, Eric and what, was, what did you feel you learned from that first outcome in the Premier League? Ah, we, we learned a lot, but I think it's normal. Uh, when you start a season, every season is in that part is, is the same. Uh, the team get together, you have to get a way of playing, especially when you are new, uh, what we are, when you have a new start and you make mistakes. Football is a game of mistakes. And so yeah, we know we have to improve in, in, in many facts and clear. In terms of improving the squad further, obviously there remains a lot of speculation as to who could possibly come in. Can you bring us up to date as to what's happening with Rabio, what's happening with Frankie de Jong? Are they likely to still happen and how satisfied are you with the support that you get in terms of recruitment at the club so far? I'm happy. I think we're cooperating really well. And second, yeah, I cannot tell about any individuals because I cannot talk about players who are under contract with, with other clubs. And just back to the start that you've had to the season, I mean, we know what pressure comes with being at Manchester United, but do you feel that there's that added pressure after the first result to get up and running at Old Trafford now? I know there's always pressure <laughs> and I have the experience uh, how that is and I know we have to win every game and I know uh, the fans uh, everyone expects that Man United win, is winning every game, so that is uh, we have to deal with that. And all of that I can do is to prepare my team as good as I can, and I'm focusing on that. Eric, Christian Eriksen obviously going back to Brentford this weekend. What have you thought of what he's done here so far, and, and how will he feel about going back there? The last question you have to ask him himself, <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, of course, it's always special when you return to the team where you came from, but also uh, he had that experience before and he know uh, yeah, we have to win and he has to perform well, so he has to focus on that. How hard a game is this for you? Every it's hard. What do you think of Brentford and how they play at the time strength? Yeah, it's really good. And um, I think same as last week, Brighton, they have a team and a coach longer together, good structure and decent football, so it will be tough but we have to win. And if Ronaldo is fit, does he play in an ideal world, does he start in your team or is it, is it different? Is there a different story to that? <laughs> I gave the answer already. <laughs> So, Eric, you say you're cooperating well with the board. Are you on the same page as the board when it comes to individual transfer targets? Uh, uh, once again, what? Are, you, are you on the same page when it comes to the, the transfer targets? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, and just we, we talked about Ronaldo. Is there any other updates on team news? What's the status of Antonio and Anthony Martial? He will not be available, and um, Crystal uh, and Victor Lindelof as well. Not for this weekend. 
just, just, just one more, um, Eric. On the squad as a whole, are you confident that when the window closes on the 1st of September, you will have a better squad, a more rounded squad, than you have at the moment? We have to, and I am convinced we will have. Yeah, not the happiest of starts to life in the Premier League for Eric Ten Hag. Can you see what he's trying to do at Manchester United? Are there signs of a Ten Hag plan? Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was for five minutes. I think it was about, that was about it when they were moving the ball really, really well. And when they went 2-1 down, well, they got the goal to get themselves back into it. They started to play. But when I look at this Ten Hag team, and I, I did feel from standing on the sideline, everything's off the cuff. Mm. You, you look at the two squads, you look at Graham Potter's team at Brighton, there's a clear plan there. They know exactly what they're doing, every single one of their players. Eric Ten Hag, it's like he's given the instructions, but the players are not taking it on board. Mm. I mean, you've got Fred and McTominay, your two holders, they're running all over the place. I mean, the second goal is the one that's criminal because they're both completely out of it. But I feel for him because he's, he's trying to put players in the situation. He's trying to use Christian Eriksen as that false nine mm. to come off and kind of link play and then use, obviously, Sancho and Rashford to use their pace. That didn't work. Where he goes from here, I, I honestly don't know. You know, you know the thing is, um, Kells, is... For the last three, three managers, I'd say, the, the problem has been the, the midfield. Mm. Um, I don't know how um, someone like um, Eric Ten Hag, who's plays good football, good, good pressing football, good possession football, has waited so long to be able to get midfielders in. It's Man United's problem for many years now, the, the midfield. You, you're not going to win games. And, you know, we, we're here in Brighton, it's the first time they've beaten them. I mean, I don't know. That's going to happen... So, at Old Trafford. At Old Trafford. That's going to happen a few more times to Man United if it carries on like it is because Man United do not control the game in the midfield because they haven't got midfielders who manage the game and then, then are able to then impose a Manchester United strategy on the opposition. Mm. So all the, they're almost playing like they're going to play on a counter-attack. Then they don't start with Ronaldo. Now, people are talking about Ronaldo, Kells, and what he's doing and disruption. Is he going to leave? They, they cannot afford to let him leave. I know that he might, he might be playing under duress, he doesn't want to be there. Whatever it is, they cannot afford to let him leave in this time because he will score those goals what's going to, what's going to win them certain games. Because if he's not there can I, last season, they're in a massive amount can of Can I problems. ask you a, a question? It mm -hmm. like, seems like a heresy because I, I disagree with you. So mm. forgive me at early doors. But I look at Arsenal mm. and Arteta allowed Aubameyang to go because he, he threatened to undermine his authority <laughs> and he had to retain that authority in the dressing room. Is it not the case with Ronaldo? I mean, I think for me personally, I look at the incident last weekend where he and several other players left the pre-season mm, from the early yes. half-time. And it, it's not so much my opinion, but the framing of the question that was asked to Ten Hag by a Dutch journalist mm -hmm. who actually said to him, Ronaldo, you said you're going to impose discipline, and yet Ronaldo does what he wants. He comes when he wants, he leaves when he wants. That was his words. Mm -hmm. And so you have a perception from outside the club of a manager that doesn't have any authority. So whatever Ronaldo gives you in terms of goals, does he not threaten to undermine that authority in the dressing room? Well, of course he does. But then you look at the situation that Ten, Ten Hag finds himself in, and without Ronaldo, um, they're not going to score the goals. And then you look at Ronaldo, where's he going to go? You know, if you're going to take Ronaldo, it's not only wages, but it's the circus, it's everything that comes with him, the, the way he is, the way he's in the dressing room. Who wants that? Mm -hmm. What other team wants that? So mm -hmm. it, as much as he wants to go, if it could have been done, then Mendes would have probably been able yeah. to do it. So I feel he can't go anywhere because people don't want the hassle that, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that he comes with. So I think that whatever they're going to do, Man United, they've got to make sure they get him on side to score these goals, because when you look at what happened, when he came on, it was a, bit, it was a little bit different for them, mm. let's face it. But was it different for them because of what Ronaldo brought, or was it different for them because suddenly Christian Eriksen doesn't need to play in that mm. false nine role, that and he can do what he's been brought in to do and what he's good at? And that, 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 this, that's what I think. I think because Eriksen was in that withdrawal role, he could pull the strings a bit more, yeah. spray some passes around. I watched him when he was at Spurs, and he's done exactly the same things as he did yesterday. I think as far as Ronaldo's concerned, you're absolutely right. He does give them a lot of goals. But if you look at all of the other teams in the top six, none of them would have him in the squad, mm -hmm. let alone in, in, on the bench. That's, or in that's the where team. Man United are right now. I, I totally agree with you. To. I think that they signed him from a position of weakness, mm -hmm. and they've been saddled with him. They clearly made 
made assurances to him that when he when he signed that he would play, uh, because otherwise he wouldn't have signed mm. for them. But the problem that you have now is that if you have him in your squad when he does that kind of thing, then you're sending the message out to other people that he can do that kind of thing. And for me, even though in the short term you would lose those goals, you absolutely would, and you would lose that threat. Mm. But in the longer term, you would preserve the authority of the manager, the cohesion of the team. You could blood a young, young, younger players because obviously with the money you would save on wages, you could get a couple of other Benjamin Sisko at Salzburg, for example, a young player that you could maybe give a couple of seasons. Dan, the fans I, would understand. I it, hear what you're saying, and maybe move them on. Even if you just pay Ronaldo up, but I just think I don't think anyone wants to. I, no, I, no, 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 don't pay, don't, don't send him to another club. But just pay him up to go, and then just say, look, we made a mistake. But if we are going to build a team, Wayne Rooney mm. made the point yesterday in the Sunday English papers where he said, I would let him go, mm. and I would invest in a younger player because if you look at the other teams in the top six, they're all teams that are constructing or, or building mm, for building, a title yes, challenge. Yeah. If you look at United, yeah. they're still stuck in the past, and they will have, they've had what ten years of bringing in old strikers. There is mm. talk now, no, not talk. They have bid for 33-year-old Marko Arnautovic at Bologna. Now, what on earth are Man United doing bidding yeah. for 33-year-old you know, Marko as well, with, Arnautovic at Bologna? With that, they 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 do that. We've we've seen them do that. Go far back as <coughs> as en Enric. Um, Henrik nice. Larsson, Larsson from so we've seen how they, they do that, you know, they've done it with Zlatan, you know what I mean? They've done it with, with sort of Cavani. They did it recently. with a great deal they of success did. with Robin van Persie. They've done it, yes. But, but it's, the, it's the subsequent strikers who've come in. Romelu Lukaku, the youngest of them, at like 24, yeah. I think he was when he came in. And, and for us, look, people will say, you know, we and we joke about it, you know, you media guys, you, you are harsh. But what we're doing is, we're, do, we're doing two things. A, looking at United under Sir Alex Ferguson and the exacting standards of discipline he had. He let Yap Stam go when Yap mm. Stam was a little bit too indiscreet. And he mm. said, no, you cannot break the sanctity of this dressing room. Mm. And he let him go. You look at the, uh, at the other teams that are building young teams. Sadio Mane, 30 years of age, sold by Klopp to bring in 23-year-old Luis Diaz. Mm. Haaland coming at 22, mm -hmm. even though they scored 96 goals, I think it was last season. I, I, I think... Ronaldo is a legend, and I don't, I don't think anybody doubts his legendary status. But even though there is a pragmatism about bringing him on, as you rightly say, to score those goals, in the longer term, you are losing that grip on the dressing room that you guys know far better than me is so important if you it are is, a manager. The only thing I'd say is that you're right in the long term, but Ten Hag might not be there in the long term. So he's got to think about to himself, I need results now. Yeah, but if he keeps losing against teams like Brighton, it's not going to be in the short term. Yeah, mm. I get that, but I guess Ronaldo, and I'm with you, I think with the discipline side of things, I wouldn't allow him to do what he's been doing. But I think for Ten Hag, Martial was injured. If they go into their next game, no centre forward, no one's got any confidence. You're going to have to use him at some stage. You can't have him just sitting there not doing anything. You're going to have to. And I get it, in the long term, it would be better to kind of move him on. But Ten Hag might not be there. Think, He's got to think yeah. about it right now. But if Ten Hag has spent the summer assuming that Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be elsewhere, if the messages that he's getting are Cristiano Ronaldo doesn't want to be at Manchester United, the right offer comes, he's going to leave, and he's making plans without Cristiano Ronaldo. Is it possible then for him to start this season with Ronaldo as an option, playing him, and still in the background keep this project or whatever it is that he keep this plan yeah, in mind that he has for Manchester United. Can he do both things? Well, well, ideally for a club of Manchester United's size, they should be able to do that because you look at Man United and we, you, you mentioned those other teams and they seem to have a plan with the signings. You look at Liverpool signing, Man City signing, Arsenal signings. There seems to be a plan and a structure to where they're signing. Does that player fit into what we're doing? Because if we do get rid of the manager, we've still got players who are playing to this um, this system, because that's how we want to play. The manager comes in and manages these players rather than Ten Hag wants him and he wants him. And he, now, now they're getting Arnautovic, somebody who, you know, again, is somebody in a, in a dressing room. <laughs> situation. He's meant to be quite a, a disruptive, yeah. volatile kind of character. And you're coming into that um, scenario and, you know, if he scores a few goals, then all of a sudden he's going to turn into the guy, well, they need me, I'm big now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm confused with Man United's recruitment and everything for over the last five, five, ten years. Also, well, right, how, how was that a rebuild by bringing in Altovic? Exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's the exactly. part that makes and no sense We haven't even gone into the fact, when's the last time Man United, you know what I mean, and you can't say Rashford at the moment because it's still not quite working out for him. When have they produced somebody out of their academy? That's... You've got City, you've got Fodham, Arsenal got Saka, you know, you, 
we're, we're talking about Liverpool, Trent Alexander, Arvi Elliott, and Kurt, you know, Arvie, you know we're talking yeah, about them amount. bringing yeah, people. Chelsea, yeah. When is the last time Man United had a player so true. that's gone on to do something in their? Cap When's the last time Man United had a player that they sold yes. to somebody from? What is going on there? It, you know something? It doesn't. It doesn't make me happy to see Man United in the doldrums like no. this, especially when I played against them when they was at their pomp. And I can understand with the Manchester United fans how disappointed they will be. People saying they're protesting. Prote they should be protesting yes. at the end of the day, the way it's gone. But the fact is, they need to do something at some stage, Darren, where they get it back to ground zero and start building properly. Well, I think that thing that they should have done was last season appointed Conte because they needed to be challenged not just on the pitch in terms of discipline and a tactical structure, but also above as well. Mm. If you look at Spurs where he's gone, he's challenged their transfer strategy. Yeah. Certain people have left the club, they've bought players early, they've gone away, they've mm. I mean, completed it, but he's happy with the squad going into the season. Yeah. The mentality has changed. The profile of player they are yes. buying has changed. Yeah. But United Desperation convinced science. themselves <laughs> They convince themselves that Conti would be a problem for mm. them. And I think more of a because, Conti than Ronaldo. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. And I think as far as he is concerned, I think a lot of United fans will look at him now and say, well, look, this is a guy who could have got our players fit. Because you'll tell me on paper it the Spurs squad is are better than Man United. Mm. I'm not having it. Mm. Second of all, this is a guy who could have got us back into the Champions League yep. because United, points-wise, were in a better position. Yep. In fact, I think at one stage they were for Yes. Uh, I, I, and he could have led them back into Champions League. That would have made going for high-line players a lot easier for them. And this is a guy who would have challenged the hierarchy's thinking. That's maybe what they've done, Darren. They don't want somebody to challenge the hierarchy because the hierarchy can be, for me, easily shown up with a manager of Conte's um, experience and now he's going to show them up for what they are because he probably comes in, tries to do what he does, they don't do it and he leaves. He would have left, yeah. right? And I'm sure that that's the kind of thing what's happened at Tottenham. Darren, Le uh, Darren, even um, too many Darrens in my life. <laughs> <laughs> too, many da too many Darrens in my life. Daniel Levy has had to go right. Okay, whatever you want, let, let's do it. Mm. And look at Spurs quietly, like you said, yeah. the gone about their business yeah. and like they're ready for the start of the season. Now you're saying that Spurs will be in and around. You can't say they won't be. Not with.